Hello Steelers and welcome to this uh, Bench Report Hobby Update. Uh, this is going out on the 7th of November. Uh, I've managed to catch a couple of minutes to myself. My wife has been here for the last week or so. Uh, so things have been a little bit busy and I've just been spending time with her because I've not seen her for a few months. So hobby time has been down quite a bit uh, for the last week at least but uh, she's just gone down to uh, London to see family so uh, I've managed to, to grab a couple of moments to myself just to uh, to keep you informed of what I've been up to uh, this I probably should have put out yesterday but I decided to do it today instead uh, just one thing before we start if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to the channel please do I'm so close to hitting 9,000 subscribers now uh, I only need about another I think about 11 a re a time of recording so please just hit that subscribe button a lot of people who do watch these don't actually subscribe you, you will also then get uh, all the latest of my videos that I put out and I do put them out relatively regularly at least uh, once a week sometimes more uh, depending on uh, on my commitments and other things as well so you will get those videos uh, in your feed if you do subscribe otherwise it will just show you the old videos but that's enough of the call to action there for you uh, I'll just get straight on to telling you exactly what I've been up to uh, since the last hobby update which is now a couple of weeks ago because I also went out to Cyprus as well for work so I've been pretty busy over the last couple of weeks, so I do apologise for not keeping you up to date. But since I got back from Cyprus, uh, we had the Terrain Tuba Challenge over on uh, on Twitter. And thanks to everybody who, who uh, had a go at something, making something. It's uh, great to see all the, uh, the entries. I will endeavour to put together stuff for a video, but again, as I say, my wife is still here for another week or so. So um, video making has just kind of been curtailed for a little while. But do look out for it, and I will endeavour to do that. As part of it though, I managed to paint a 3D paint, uh, printed graveyard. This was from Sabotage, all the bits and pieces, I just put them together and um, uh, he sent me bits and pieces and I, I glued them all together. Uh, made a little graveyard uh, that I can just stick into a, a village or something like that, just a nice little uh, interesting uh, thing to put in there really. Uh, I also did some Soviet and German jumping off points as well for uh, Chain of Command. This is off the back of playing Chain of Command with Dex and his really nice jumping off points. Uh, the ones I've got are pretty generic and they were just like barrels and boxes and things. And I just thought I'd do some more specific ones. I will do some British and American ones at some point in the future, just when I get a chance to get some figures. But it's a nice way of using up spare figures really. Uh, and I quite like them myself. Also, I'd actually started on a load of First World War figures that I got from Peter Pig. You can see these on the desk at the moment. These are currently undercoated. I've just done the bases. Uh, I need to do the basic uniform stuff on, on both the Germans and the British. I've managed to get together a full platoon of British and the majority of a platoon of Germans. I need to. I actually need to buy a couple more packs of the Germans just to fill out a couple of the bombers and things. And I need some anyway for the existing units. So that should give me... Uh, two platoons each of those and that's going to be for things like through the mud and the blood and stuff like that uh, so that's kind of my that's what I'm working on at the moment uh, I'll probably do these while I'm watching the plastic crack guys tonight and I'm also thinking of doing a live stream tomorrow again because as I said my wife is away in London for the week so I'll probably just do a live stream tomorrow night so look out for that Tuesday night uh, usual time 7.30 also I start to work on this small yard as well. This is just a, a brick, uh, brick wall and wooden fenced yard. Again, 3D printer from Sabotage. That's going to be dead easy just to finish off. I've pretty much block painted it. It just needs to finish it off. So I've not really completed those, but at least I've been doing bits and pieces as well. I've had a chance to. In the post, I got some of Fizzer's Men of Metal. Let me just grab those for you. Uh, this is quite a while ago now actually I was going to do a review of these but I've not even opened them yet these are uh, their new ranges of 18mm Napoleonics uh, I got some Highlanders because I wanted to try them out and I don't have any Highlanders and I wanted something slightly different to the stuff I've got so I've got a couple of sets of Highlanders uh, really nice uh, figures by the looks of it as I say I've not even opened these yet these are going to be for sharp practice that's what they're going to be destined for uh, they look lovely and I think they're going to fit really well with the AB miniatures that I already have uh, in 18mm so that's kind of what I was buying those for 
also uh, Paul over at Sabotage did me a really nice favour and he's done me some of these as well these uh, force morale markers and jumping off points for Star Wars Chain of Command uh, these are very nice I don't think they're on his website uh, I've I'm not going to say anything more than that, but uh, he's he's uh, done these for me. Uh, I'm guessing there's a favour. I know he's done a couple for other people. Uh, email him, ask him. Uh, but this is, uh, I mean, you know, I, I like Star Wars Chain of Command. I was talking about it on the live stream I did with the, the guys over at the Battle Bunker HQ last night, and there was a lot of interest in that. Uh, I'm going to paint these up at some point and get them done. I do like Star Wars Chain of Command as well, and I also made a commitment on the live stream, which I took around a sec, uh, to running a game with Chain of Command, Star Wars Chain of Command, at the next CrackCon Games Day, uh, whenever that will be. Uh, so, uh, you know, keep an eye on that. Also, the other thing as well, speaking of the CrackCon guys, uh, is I got a copy of 1914. This came from the Great Escape Games guys. Uh, really great service. I got this because I was chatting to Martin, uh, Recently on a video, uh, the Blood and Valor, Valor did it, video I did, he mentioned 1914. I knew about it, uh, and I've known about it for a while, but I, I completely forgot about it, and he just basically uh, reminded me of the existence of it. So I thought, well, I'll get that. It was only 15 quid. Uh, it's a smallish book, though, uh, but you do get a set of cards with it as well. And I had it within, I think, two days of ordering. Uh, really good service from Great Escape Games. You cannot uh, argue with that. I've read through it. Uh, I am going to do a review of it. Uh, I've got to say, so far, uh, I quite like what I see. Um, I'm a little surprised that it is only 1914. Uh, I would have thought this works for all of the First World War, uh, but it, I think it kind of suffers a little bit from, you know, war gamers' blindness when it comes to the First World War, in that anything from 1915 to 1918 is almost impossible to, to war game apart from the very last months of the war complete nonsense as far as I'm concerned but I think this could be a good game for uh, a, 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 it's a similar level to square bashing and I think it would work as a, uh, a, a, a game that you could quite easily play instead of square bashing I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do a proper review of it, so I'll not say too much about it now. Uh, but so far, I've liked what I've seen. There's a few things in there that, you know, I've, I've picked up on. There's a couple of things I might change, but then that's just the way it is, isn't it, with every game. And as I say, because my wife's been here, I've not really had a chance to game. I didn't get down to the club last week, but I am going to go this week and take through the mud and blood down of a game with Gary and Simon down there. So looking forward to that. But uh, it's been mostly been board games this week, and we played a game, four-player game of Ark Nova over at my chum's house last weekend. Uh, the zoo building game that my wife got me for my birthday. Great fun. Uh, it took forever though, and we didn't actually get it finished because we were there for five hours. It's a long game, so you know, set aside a long time. But also, you know, my wife was, it was the first time she played, so she was learning the game. And I think it would speed up if you if everybody knew kind of what they were doing. But even so, it still took a while. Also, uh, we bought, whilst we were uh, over in Harrogate uh, for a talk that I did earlier last week, uh, we bought a copy of the Castles of Burgundy, uh, a little board game, uh, relatively cheap. And it had all the expansions in it. Uh, so it was it's a, a new version of it, I know there's an older version, really good game uh, of placement, area placement kind of game set in medieval France uh, with uh, various options and um, uh, what you call machine building uh, mechanics within it, really good, we played two games of it, first game obviously a bit slow because it was a learning game, second game we just flew through it and it really picked up, there's loads in it, really enjoyed it, uh, the one thing I would say is there isn't much of an interactive quality between players, it's very much you're building your own thing and you the only interactive part is just watching the other players take the stuff that you want or taking the stuff that they want uh, from the central board. But apart from that, minor, absolutely minor gripe, otherwise a really good game. It'll be interesting to see how it plays with two, uh, three and four players and it's even got a solo mode as well. If there's any, if anybody's interested, again, I might do a bit more of an in-depth review of it. Uh, just let me know in the in the comments and I might put together a, a review of it because it is a good game, really enjoyed it. Uh, also, 
uh, over the week we, uh, myself and my wife built a P51 uh, Mustang Jigsaw, which I picked up in the works for a fiver. It was only 500 piece, but it took forever because of the sky. <laughs> Everything else was good. Uh, again, just a bit of fun, and we both like doing jigsaws, and it's just a nice way to spend some time with my wife and, uh, you know, uh, do something that is uh, vaguely war related, uh, which was good. Uh, I mentioned it. Uh, I was on the Battlebunk uh, HQ live stream. That was last night. That was Sunday night. I had a really good time. Uh, two hours flew by, by like like nobody's business. Uh, really good to you know virtually meet the the guys at Battlebunk HQ. It's a, a channel that I've long uh, enjoyed watching their content, and they put out some good stuff. And their twice weekly uh, chats on a Sunday are well worth tuning in for. On a, about eight o'clock of the evening. Great way of spending some time painting on the last day of the week and just listening to other people chatting about wargaming. Uh, I was absolutely honoured to be asked to be on and uh, really enjoyed it. And it was great to, to chat to them and uh, some interesting topics we touched on which weren't just wargaming as well. Put a link for that in the description below, of course. Uh, so jump across and have a watch of that uh, and see if you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed it. And also off the back of that, uh, Andy, friends of General Haig, he suggested making uh, an SS143 training pamphlet t-shirt, so I did. <laughs> so I did that, uh, put that together, and that is available at Redbubble. Again, I will put a link to that in the description down below, so you can check that out as well. One final thing as well, just before I do wrap up, that's, uh, there's not been I mean, a great deal going on. I uh, shouted to Rich of Two Fat Lardies, uh, and he's invited me down to Lard Island. Uh, so that's going to be uh, springtime next year. Uh, we've got it in the calendar already. We'll probably film a game. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I won't spoil it, but uh, I'm looking forward to that immensely to get down to uh, down to the, to the Lard Island and see where the, where the magic happens. Uh, and we will most likely be filming, or at least I'll be filming the visit and, uh, and uh, put that out as a video at some point. So look out for that. That should be good fun, I hope. All right, I will wrap up there, like I say. Uh, it's kind of been bits and bats over the last week or so just because of various things. I knew I was going to be busy in October and then also early November anyway. Keep an eye on the uh, on the the, the 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 schedule as well, which I've already released for November. I'll put up a December one soon, and keep checking up on that. Also, checking again. I've said it. You know, keep checking in on the uh, Facebook group for Stone Steel and also the page. You just have to join, apply to join the the group. Dead easy. I will let you in as soon as I see that you have applied. Uh, you don't need to answer any questions or anything. You just jump aboard, get in there, post some pictures and I'll see you over there. And as I say, I will wrap up there because I've not got much else to say, but that'll do for now and thanks for watching. <laughs>